The Helios Gene Gun is an easy-to-use, rapid, versatile gene delivery system. Plasmid DNA is attached to microscopic gold particles. These are coated onto the inside of lengths of plastic tubing, or cartridges, and loaded into the gun. When the gun is fired, the pulse of helium sweeps the microcarriers from the inside wall of the cartridge. The particles pick up speed in the acceleration channel, then spread out as they travel down the barrel. The barrel opens as a cone, causing the gas to be pulled outward, reducing the shock wave. The particles maintain a high velocity and are fired into the target. The battery compartment is in the base of the handle. Remove the battery cover. Insert the battery with the positive terminal towards the front of the gun. The positive symbol can be seen just inside the battery compartment. Replace the cover. The gene gun is connected to the regulator by the helium hose. Insert the stem of the quick connect fitting into the body of the fitting on the regulator and push until it clicks. The other end of the hose connects similarly to the gene gun. To release the tubing, push the ring on the connector and pull apart. The tubing support cylinder is inserted into the base. Check that there is an O-ring in the stainless steel end. Insert the end with the spring into the hole in the support bar. By compressing the spring, insert the other end into the motor housing. Cut a 4 to 5 inch piece of syringe adapter tubing. Attach the barb of a lure fitting to each end of the tubing. Attach one end to the side of the motor housing. Attach the other end to the top of the flow meter. Prepare two syringes with adapter tubing as follows. Cut two 16 to 18 inch pieces of syringe adapter tubing. Attach a female lure fitting to two 10 milliliter syringes. Attach the tubing to each syringe. Slide one of the syringes into the syringe sleeve. Fasten to the clamp on the base. The screw should be tightened sufficiently to hold the syringe in place while the plunger is moved. The other syringe and tubing will be used to draw the gold ethanol suspension into the tubing. The tubing prep station needs to be connected to the nitrogen supply using the nitrogen hose and a large lure fitting. Connect one end of the hose to the nitrogen regulator. Fit the male lure connector to the other end and attach it to the female connector at the side of the tubing prep station near the flow meter. If using a peristaltic pump to remove the ethanol, calibrate it to 4 to 5 milliliters per minute. If a peristaltic pump is not available, a syringe and tubing can be used inserted into the syringe sleeve and clamped onto the base of the tubing prep station as described in tubing prep station assembly. Practice removing liquid at a rate of 0.5 to 0.75 inches per second by loading the tubing with ethanol, inserting it into the tubing prep station, marking the tubing at several points, and timing removal of the ethanol. It should take 40 to 60 seconds to remove the ethanol from the entire length of tubing. Ensure that the tubing is completely dry by purging it with nitrogen. Insert one end of the roll of gold coat tubing into the opening on the right side of the tubing prep station. 
push the tubing into the hole and into the tubing support cylinder. At the opposite end of the tubing support cylinder is an O-ring and this will give slight resistance as the tubing is pushed the final half inch. Using the knob on the flow meter, turn on the nitrogen and adjust the flow to 0.3 to 0.4 liters per minute. Allow nitrogen to flow through the tubing for at least 15 minutes immediately before loading. Turn off the flow of nitrogen and remove the gold coat tubing from the tubing prep station. Cut a 29 to 30 inch length of tubing for each 3 milliliter sample of DNA microcarrier suspension. Connect one end of the tubing to the syringe using the adapter tubing. Make sure the gold is well resuspended. Quickly draw the gold suspension into the tubing until it reaches 6 to 8 inches from the end without drawing in any air bubbles. Remove the tubing from the suspension and draw it in a further 3 inches. Keep the tubing horizontal and slide the loaded tube, still with the syringe attached, into the tubing support cylinder until the tubing passes through the O-ring. Allow the microcarriers to settle for two to five minutes. Detach the syringe and adapter tubing and connect the tubing to the peristaltic pump or to the 10 milliliter syringe attached to the base of the tubing prep station. Remove the ethanol very steadily and evenly at a rate of four to five milliliters per minute. Any unevenness may result in inconsistent coating. Detach the pump or syringe. Immediately after the ethanol is removed, turn on the tubing prep station to start rotating the tubing support cylinder. Allow the gold to smear in the tube for 20 to 30 seconds. Open the valve on the flow meter and allow 0.35 to 0.4 liters per minute of nitrogen to dry the tubing while it rotates. Continue to dry the tubing while turning for five minutes. Stop the rotation and shut off the nitrogen. Remove the tubing. Examine the coated tubing to verify that the microcarriers are evenly distributed. Ideally, the gold should be spread uniformly over the entire inside surface of the tubing, but it may polarize to one side, which is just as effective. As long as there are no clumps or uncoated areas, the tubing can be used for cartridges. The tubing cutter is used to cut the coated tubing into half-inch lengths. These can be used immediately or stored at four degrees in a tightly closed vial containing desiccant. As many as 12 cartridges may be placed into a single cartridge holder. The cartridge holder has two sets of numbers. Those in the center indicate which slot to load the cartridge into and those along the edge are to indicate which slot is in line to be fired when the cartridge holder is in the gun. To load the cartridge holder, place it on a flat surface with the numbers facing up. Starting with position one, load the cartridges. Invert the cartridge holder and push the cartridges against a flat surface so that they are flush with the numbered side. Load the cartridge holder into the gun. Move the cylinder lock on the gun so that it is latched in the forward position. Unlatch the push bar by pulling it outward. Pull back and hold the cylinder advance lever 
to retract the barrel liner into the gun barrel. Place the cartridge holder into the gun with the number 12 facing up. When it is in the correct position, the knob on the back of the cartridge holder will slip into the notch on the barrel plate. Release the cylinder advance lever. The inner barrel sleeve should hold the cartridge holder in place. Unlatch the cylinder lock to insert the barrel pin into the central hole in the cartridge holder. Engage the push bar. It should snap into place and contact the cartridge holder in one of the deep crevices. Push in and release the cylinder advance lever to ratchet the cartridge holder to the first position for firing. Caution! Hearing and eye protection should be worn. Firing the gun produces a sound wave of about 108 decibels at 400 PSI. Before using the gun to fire samples, it should be loaded with an empty cartridge holder and fired to pressurize the helium hose and internal reservoirs of the gun with the correct helium pressure. Firing the gun without a cartridge holder in place can result in blowing out the O-rings. Once the cartridge holder is correctly inserted, the five charging lights on the back of the gun will be sequentially illuminated. After about five seconds, the unit will be fully charged and the charged light will flash. Press the safety interlock on the side of the gun. The armed lights will alternately flash. Position the nozzle over the target and press the trigger. The helium will discharge and the fired light will be illuminated briefly. The gun must be fired within 30 seconds or the interlock will need to be released and reactivated. The process of charging occurs automatically after the gun is fired. The green battery light indicates the battery is sufficiently charged. The gun is ready for the next sample. Use the cylinder advance lever to rotate the cartridge holder to the next position. The gun can be fired left-handed by engaging the safety lock with the lower part of the index finger. 